morning, everyone. Uh, it is Wednesday, July 31st, uh, 2013. Uh, and I think I'm going to try and start my own little gardening series with the plants that I have. Uh, I'm going to cover the different things that I've done, uh, what I prefer as far as growing from seeds, uh, what I prefer to look for if you're going to buy from a store, whether it be from, you know, four inch pots, or if you're going to go and spend a little bit more and maybe get the uh, biodegradable type pots, and, you know, just general growing here in California, uh, different things to look for, plants, and everything that I know of, of gardening, my mistakes, and my, uh, what do you call those? Not mistakes, uh, triumphs, I guess, those things, the good things, everything that goes right, <laughs> because that's, that's definitely what gardening comes down to, uh, trial and error, it'll be different for everywhere you garden, and, and yeah, locations definitely vary on how things will grow, what can grow, and how well it will grow. So uh, hopefully I will cover all of those things here in my, what may not be too long of a gardening series, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, today I'm going to go over the different plants that I have. Let's get started. Alright, so the first plant that I'm showing here is uh, Caribbean Red. Um, this one was initially store-bought, started out in a, in a four inch pot, um, it was maybe five, six inches when I got it, now it's about, oh, I don't know, maybe close to two feet, technically, not, not including the pot, I don't ever include the pots into my calculations, this one actually has a uh, praying mantis that's on it, which, good book. Um, it's going well in this here pot. Uh, this plant in particular, it could be the fact that the store I bought it from is uh, one that uses uh, shading. When you use shading, that means that your plants aren't getting direct sunlight, which means that they like to be uh, in, I guess you can say partial sun. They like, to, they like the outdoor temperatures, but not necessarily direct sunlight. So keep that in mind when you are buying stuff from the stores. Um, if it is under some form of shading, it may need to either be <clears throat> given time to adjust to full sunlight, if that's what you want, or if that's what your area calls for. Um, me, since I have access to shade, I have a 10 by 10 tent that I use. Uh, I keep this in primarily shade with slight bits of sun, so that way it's perfectly happy. This is uh, definitely doing very, very well. I bought this back in June, and it's now July 30th, 31st, something like that, Wednesday, 2013. Uh, but yeah, it's doing great. I'm really proud of this one. Okay, so this is my red bell pepper plant. Um, it first started out, uh, technically, it started out at about this tall here. But I had to cut it back. You're supposed to, or not necessarily supposed to, but it does your plants well to cut them back at the very first Y. So you'll see your plants grow out and then they get their first Y like this, and where they start spreading out, as long as there's leaves on the underside of that Y, you can cut it back and it'll grow back a lot stronger and a lot more full, and hopefully uh, it'll give more fruit. So the red bell pepper. Right now, looks like it has approximately five or so peppers that are going to get flowering and started soon. Um, and I want to say I got this one maybe mid-June, somewhere around there. Uh, let's move on to the next one. So I'm, I'm expecting fruit from this one around maybe September, October. We'll see. 
Okay, so this is a uh, Scotch Bonnet, which is a hot pepper. Um, they're similar to the Caribbean Red. It ranges from about 130,000 to about 350,000. Um, this one prefers more so direct sunlight than that one does. This one's moved about a foot forward, which means it's in direct sunlight. Um, it gets about 95-ish, maybe a little hotter on an average summer day here in Southern California. Um, as you can see, it has tons of flowers, so um, every single little one of these sections here where there's flowers is going to give a ton of hot peppers, uh, which is great because I'm going to eat as many as possible and maybe maybe see about planting some new seeds. Um, when I first got this, it was in about a four to six inch pot. It was starting to suffer from being root bound, which basically means that the roots are just kind of tangling over themselves on the inner side of the uh, pot um, and I will show you some examples of that as well all right so this one here is a jade plant this is more of a uh, cactus type desert variety um, and no I can't give you the scientific name um, this was technically here in our apartment complex when we got it and yes this is an apartment um, our landlord actually gave us this plant before she passed away about a year ago or so. Uh, so when we move, I'm taking it with me because as far as I'm concerned, we were, we kind of had a bond with her, like she was one of our family members. Um, you may notice some of the spider webs throughout the plant, uh, which which is a good thing. It's a good thing to have spiders in your garden. They help keep away the bad bugs. Uh, before this, it was a little pot, maybe about this big or so, that wide, maybe what that's like half a gallon or so, something like that. So now it's in a good size three gallon, closer to four, about 3.7 I think it is. Um, doing really well. Um, I probably won't transplant it until we move somewhere either bigger or more permanent, should it be said. So yeah, that's the jade plant. Doing well, pretty proud of this thing too. Okay. All right, so these big ones you see in this whole back section over here, these are super chilies. So these are where I got my start in gardening. <laughs> There's a squirrel up there being crazy. Um, so yeah, these are super chilies. This is where I got my start in gardening. Um, I've had these for about two years now. Started out with six, four of them lived. This is when I knew absolutely nothing about gardening. All I knew was, you know, get some sunlight and remember to water them. And here I am now with four of them that are in, again, massive pots and they're doing very well. Uh, the last of the red ones we picked last night for dinner, um, which their this spice range is around 30 to 50,000. More tolerable for people that like heat but don't necessarily want to overdo it. Um, this is a great plant for that. Uh, yeah, they're doing great. They love their bigger pots. Uh, the one on the far right started out kind of small because of the fact that it was sharing, or should I say fighting, for root space in a smaller containment. And now that it has these bigger pots, doing awesome. Here in the front here, these ones that you see all of everything like this, these are edamame. started from seed. They're doing fairly well. I still need to do some reading on them uh, to better figure out how to have them thrive, should it be said. Um, as well in that corner there, let me move over there. So in this little corner here, we have one, two, three, four, and five cucumber plants. Uh, earlier I was mentioning plants being root bound. Um, what that basically means is that the roots all start to gather around themselves and tangle themselves within each, each other, um, which is exactly why I prefer clear cups slash pots. As you can see, I got my old recycled Starbucks cups that I use for planting. Um, this one's doing great. This is one of the smaller guys. This is the biggest one I have. I planted these maybe about 
month, month and a half ago now. They're doing really well. Um, as you can see there, this is exactly why I prefer the clear cups. You can see all the roots. Uh, and the same, the same goes for when they're sprouting from seed. If you do yourself the favor and plant them closer to the edges of a clear cup, um, you can see when they start to germinate, when the actual first root comes out, and when they start to sprout out their first leaves, uh, which is really helpful. It lets you keep better track of seedlings. So yeah, uh, all of the plants that are here on this side prefer minimal sun, but still outdoors slash partial shaded sun. Move on to the smaller ones slash seedlings, and uh, as far as the Starbucks cups go, I can get those slash recycle them because of the drinks I get. Yeah, it's always a plus recycling. Okay, so take two on this. Uh, in this section here, I have peas, tomatoes. More peas. These two are tomatoes, and those three over there are peas. Up here we have five saffron, which need to be repotted. Spinach, which I planted maybe one or two nights ago. Can't really remember. Uh, this is broccoli. These are sugar snap peas, and this here is four tomatillo plants. This is broccoli, and let's move a little closer to the other side. Okay, so this is super chilly. This little guy will grow to be the plants that you saw on the other side of my patio. Uh, this here is Trinidad Maruga Scorpion. You can see a little one starting there, uh, one there, and I want to say there's another one. Ah, here it is. There's another one right here. Right next to it, we have both of these that one and this one are the same they are paper lanterns which is a type of uh, habanero so fairly hot to say the least and moving right along we have this is a cilantro one of the few that I don't really have to have labeled because I've gotten accustomed to what it looks like um, it's probably about maybe a week or two old I think closer to two this here um, this is my Mexican fence. <laughs> this is a black, <laughs> this is black seeded Simpson, which is a type of lettuce. Um, I may have to water this less, being that it's looking kind of yellowish. Um, over here we have another cup for Trinidad Baruga Scorpion. They're starting to sprout. Here, let me, let me give you an idea of what it, I don't know if you can see that there or not. You can see a little white that's it's starting to sprout out of that yellow there which is the seeds so little tiny seeds and exactly why I was saying I prefer the clear cups because you can better monitor where they are how well they're growing whether or not you need to uh, move the dirt a little so that they can push through a little easier and have a better chance of natural survival or you know what I mean Ugh. and then Moving right along, we here have more tomatillo plants. You can see these little guys are doing well. Um, for anyone that doesn't know, these black marks are so I can better keep track of where the ones that are just barely starting to sprout are. This is butter crunch lettuce. Starts out fairly small as well. Uh, seeds are even smaller than that of a uh, hot pepper plant and this is my little baby cucumber plant this one was planted the same time that most of the other ones on the other side were but he's taking his time he's he's a slow mover it's okay though he will do just fine this is also cilantro and over here we have more cilantro butter crunch lettuce over here and on the very corner here this is three carrots so yeah that's my garden as of today uh, I want to say it's is it the 31st it's the 31st yeah Wednesday July 31st
Okay, so that about wraps up uh, what I got going on in my garden right now. Um, eventually, I'd, I'd love to grow more stuff. One of the things I've always wanted to grow is corn, because I fracking love some corn. I can eat me corn all the damn time. Um, so yeah, I want to do updates on all the little dudes, how well they're growing, uh, how well they might not be doing, what I do to fix it, everything else. Uh, feel free to ask questions. I'll do my absolute best to answer anything that I do know. Uh, anything that I don't know, I'll do my best to research and maybe even ask the people that I watch videos on. Um, that being said, happy gardening and see you soon.